can now start the lecture. देखिए मेरी बात सुने कोई बात नहीं क्विज हो गया उसको भूल जाए अब और मुझे सिर्फ अब ये डर लग रहा है कि दी एंजॉयमेंट आउट ऑफ दिस कोर्स विल बी रिड्यूस बिकॉज नाउ यू स्टार्टेड दिस क्विजेस बट क्विजेस एंड एंड दीज असाइनमेंट्स आर एन नेसेसरी ईवल of the GPS system that has been gifted to us by the United States of America. <laughs> so, unfortunately, we have to have these quizzes and these uh, assignments because we ha need to have some measure of how I am teaching and how you are learning. So, this is a necessary evil. Isko kadvi goli samaj ke aap kha jayen. Lekin do not take out the excitement and the need to learn and the urge to learn modern physics and quantum mechanics because we all know that this is how nature works so what we're going to look at today is constructing matter waves using Fourier theory and we've already uh, done a quite a bit of motivation of this fact this will be our last week of studying matter waves and from the next week we'll be studying wave functions which is a totally new concept to you but I would just like to start by mentioning the name of Fourier. Fourier was a mathematician in Napoleon's army. And he is credited with a large number of mathematical discoveries. Notably, the conduction of heat through solids. And the law that governs the conduction of heat is carries his name. As well as a very sophisticated mathematical theory that is called Fourier analysis which most of you being engineers and most of you being electrical engineers will study in quite a bit of detail but uh, physicists will also be exposed to Fourier theory biologists who do microscopy should know what Fourier theory is so it's a very important concept but let me start off by giving you an example <coughs> and the example is of a particle that is moving at a speed v. The particle is moving at a speed v, g. So, bilkul mic, bilkul A particle is moving with a speed v, and it's a non-relativistic particle. meaning that the speed v is much smaller than c. So what is the energy of this particle? The energy is half mv squared. Or p squared over 2m, where p is the momentum of the particle. Now, if there is a matter wave associated with the particle, there is some kind of wave associated with the particle of frequency omega and wave number k. Can you tell me what the phase velocity of this wave would be? Can you calculate the phase velocity? The phase velocity is omega over k. Now we have two relationships. The first relationship is that energy of a particle is given by h bar omega. The second relationship is the de Broglie relationship which is p is given by h over lambda which is nothing but h over 2 pi 2 pi over lambda which is h bar k. So we have these relationships E equals h bar omega and P equals h bar k. Ab in dono relationships ko istemal karte huye, can you tell me what the phase velocity of this particle would be from this formula? Uh 
देख सकते हैं बता सकते हैं आप ई ओवर पी राइट ई ओवर पी दिस इज द फेज वेलोसिटी बट व्हाट इज ई ई इज पी स्क्वेड ओवर टू एम सो दिस बिकम्स पी ओवर टू एम बट व्हाट इज द मोमेंटम ऑफ द पार्टिकल इट्स एम वी The momentum of the particle is mv, so this turns out to be v over two. Now this is paradoxical because the velocity of the particle is in fact v, the momentum of the particle is mv. It's a non-relativistic particle, by the way. The phase velocity turns out to be half the velocity of the particle. Therefore, the wave. Having a moment, having a wave number k and possessing a frequency omega gives you a phase velocity which is half the real velocity of the particle, which means that this phase velocity is not a good indicator of the particle. This phase velocity does not correspond to the velocity of the particle. So the concept of phase velocity is inadequate. बिल्कुल आवाज नहीं आ रही आपको वॉल्यूम बिल्कुल इसका तेज है और देखो ये बात समझ आई कि फेज वेलोसिटी इज हाफ द वेलोसिटी ऑफ द पार्टिकल व्हिच मींस दैट द फेज वेलोसिटी इज नॉट अ गुड मेजर ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स मोशन वी नीड टू लुक एट सम अदर क्वांटिटी व्हिच इज अ गुड मेजर ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स मोशन the phase velocity is inadequate in describing the velocity of the particle therefore let's use the concept of the group velocity instead of the phase velocity and let's see whether the group velocity is a better measure of the velocity of the particle or not so the group velocity as we all know is d omega over dk So can you compute d omega over dk just give it a shot बाई टू ग्रुप लॉस्ट भी वी बाई टू आ रही है <laughs> किसने कहा वी के इक्वल आ रही है आई एम ब्लैक बोर्ड पर आए
शाबाश वेरी गुड सो वॉट आपका नाम क्या वॉट शाहजेब है शोन अस इज बेसिकली द फैक्ट दैट द ग्रुप वी वी जी विच इज डी ओ मेगा ओवर डी के कैन ऑल्सो बी रिटन एज डी ई ओवर डी पी एंड इट टर्न आउट टू बी एग्जैक्टली इक्वल टू द विलॉसिटी ऑफ द पार्टिकल कैन फॉलो दिस कैलकुलेशन सो नाउ दिस पार्टिकल दैट इज मूविंग विद विलॉसिटी वी द फेज विलॉसिटी इज एन इन एडिकुएट रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ द विलॉसिटी बट द ग्रुप विलॉसिटी इज एग्जैक्टली आइडेंटिकल टू द विलॉसिटी ऑफ द पार्टिकल देर फोर द ग्रुप विलॉसिटी मस्ट बी द एक्यूरेट एंड द हाई फिडिलिटी मेजर ऑफ द विलॉसिटी ऑफ द पार्टिकल एंड इट इज द ग्रुप और द पल्स और द वेव पैकेट दैट इज कॉरेस्पॉन्डिंग टू द पार्टिकल एंड नॉट द एंड नॉट अ हारमोनिक वेव सो इफ यू हैव अ वेव इफ यू हैव अ पार्टिकल इन स्पेस It's moving forward in time, corresponding to this particle, you associate a pulse, a wave packet, or a pulse such that the group velocity of this pulse, v g, equals the real velocity of the particle, and the phase velocity is just an inadequate measurement. it's an inadequate representation of the particle so never use the phase velocity use the group velocity but the question remains how do we construct this pulse how do we construct this wave packet the phase velocity we've seen has no physical meaning it's just a mathematical abstraction in our minds which has no physical significance the real physical significance rests with this wave packet which moves with the particle the particle moves forward the wave packet moves with it wherever the particle goes the wave packet moves with it so that is why de broglie call this a pilot wave it is piloting the particle it's always accompanying the particle and whenever you do an experiment that exposes the wave nature it is this wave packet or pulse that is resulting in those experimental results so the question that we that now remains is how do we construct this pulse this pulse or wave packet and this is a question i would like to address in 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 today's lecture when we were talking about beats jab humne beats ke bare mein baat ki thi to aapko yaad hoga ke we added two waves of different k's different omegas and obtained a pulse that had an envelope and the pulse looked like this the pulse extended in space and time but there were certain regions where the amplitude dropped so this was the phenomenon of beats now we would like to take this example to its extreme that is we want to add up a large number of waves with different k's and different frequencies in time and different amplitudes such that the resultant of all of these waves gives us a pulse which exists
function that I've drawn here is called a k. It's a function of k, and I give it the name a. This function that I've drawn here is f of x. Now, f x and a k are related by a mathematical process which is called Fourier transformation, and the process is depicted in these equations. So the best way to understand these equations is to apply it. Let's look at an example. Example number one. Now I'm going to go backwards. On this axis I have k and on this axis I have a of k. Quite a beautiful example, so please pay attention. Okay. Now, our function is this is the function in Fourier space because on this axis we have k, and the function is such that it has a height a in a certain region of k, that is k naught and minus k naught, and it's continuous in this region and zero elsewhere. This means that I have a wave. Of wave number k naught of amplitude a that is being added <coughs> to another wave of wave number slightly smaller than k naught of the same amplitude plus another wave of yet a smaller wave number here of the same amplitude. And likewise, I am adding a large number of waves, an infinite number of waves whose wave numbers is continuously spread between plus k naught and minus k naught, and all of these constituent waves have the same amplitude a. So this is what this figure represents. What I want to tell is that when I add all of these waves according to this recipe, what kind of function do I get in space? What kind of function do I get? That will be governed by the first equation. By this equation. So now let's apply this equation. Let when we apply this equation, our function in space f x becomes one over two pi. Under root. Now the function is at a constant value a between minus k naught and k naught, and it's zero elsewhere. So my limits of integration become come from minus k naught to plus k naught. E i k x b k. Now I can solve this integral. 1 over a over 2 pi under root e i k x iota x from minus k naught to plus k naught. I get a over 2 pi under root <coughs> e iota k x k naught x minus e minus iota k naught x over iota x. This is what I get. I can put in a 2 here, I put in a 2 here, I get 2 over pi under root a. This, what is, now what is this? What is this term? Divided by 2 iota. What is this? This is sin k naught x. Sin k naught x divided by x.
I can put in a K naught here. I can put in a K naught here. K naught is just a constant. So this is my function in in the spatial domain. I add up all the constituent waves whose wave function, whose wave numbers are a continuous spread between plus k naught and minus k naught, and lo and behold, the function that I get in space looks like this. So can you plot this function for me? Why not? मुश्किल है ना मुमकिन तो नहीं मुश्किल है आप इतनी पढ़नी चाहिए क्या आप आसान हो जानी चाहिए क्या मुश्किल है इसमें पहले मेरे सवाल का जवाब मैंने खुद के नोट से डिवाइड और सब्सक्राइब मल्टीप्लाई करके ना भी डालें कोई बात नहीं आसानी लगती है कैन यू प्लॉट दिस फंक्शन फॉर मी Now when I plot this function, this axis becomes the x-axis because now I am plotting the spatial domain function. What this function looks like in space? So you plot that you can see it. Can you see it? या भी इस तरह का फंक्शन पहले कभी नहीं देखा Semblance of a pulse. 
or a wave packet. And this can cause is a good candidate for a matter wave. It's a good candidate for a matter wave. So now what we've done, we have a distribution of A's. These A's are called Fourier coefficients. So we have a distribution of A's and from the Fourier <coughs> coefficients we have constructed the wave function in or the pulse in space. If this was the time axis, if this was the time axis, this would have been the pulse in the if this was the frequency axis, this would be the pulse in the time domain. Because time and frequency are conjugates, space, x and wave number are conjugates. One important thing I would, ha, the very important thing, the very important thing of the uncertainty principle ki taraf haan, aista, aista, aista padne ki koshish kai. Aur mein batana chaaro ki uncertainty principle mein koi aisi khas anthoni baat nahi hai. What is the width of this function in the k space? Delta k, let's call this width delta k. The width of this function in the k space is 2k0. Now this pulse has an infinite width. This pulse has an infinite width because the wings have to stay in. But in the under both term amplitude. So this is a good measure of the width of the pulse in space. The distance between these nodes is a good measure of the pulse width in space. Let's call it delta x. What is delta x equal to? 2 pi over k naught. Let's multiply delta x and delta k. The multiplication results in delta x into delta k is 2 pi over k naught. This is 4 pi. Now this is a constant. What does this relationship tell us? This relationship tells us a very important fact. Please bear with me for another couple of minutes. A very important fact. If this is the k space, I have Fourier coefficients in the k space. I take the Fourier transform in the x space. I have a pulse. Now, if I shrink this pulse in the k space, if I shrink this pulse in the k space, then the pulse will widen in the x space. If I expand this pulse in the k space, then this pulse will sharpen in the x space because delta x and delta k are inversely proportional to one another. So if I want a narrow wave pulse, if I want a narrow packet in the x space, I need to add up a large number of amplitudes in the k space, a large number of waves in the k space. If I want a peak in the x space, I will have to add up an infinite number of waves <coughs> in the k space. So delta x and delta k, they are like pressure and volume, <coughs> Boyle's law. One goes up, the other must go down. The spread in the x space goes up, but the spread in the k space goes down. If I want to get narrower pulses, narrower wave packets, I have to add up a large, a diversely large number of waves in the k space with different values of k. So the, this is the beginning of the concept of uncertainty principle. Now as a homework, before we meet on Friday, so what we are going to have, we are going to have a lecture on Friday and we are going to have a problem solving session on Saturday. And before Friday, I would like you to do a small homework, which of course is not graded, but it is for mutual benefit. The mutual benefit is that suppose 
I have in the K space Fourier coefficient which is a Gaussian. Centered at K naught. So in Fourier, in the K space, my Fourier coefficient is not like this rectangular or square pulse. It's not this squarish distribution. Rather, it's a Gaussian. And the Gaussian has a mathematical form A, some amplitude into exponents minus alpha squared A minus K naught squared. Now this is my pulse in K space. I have a Gaussian distribution in the K space. What I want to do, I want to construct a pulse in the real space, in the X space. Now you have to tell me what that pulse will look like. You will have to plot it. So this is your homework before we meet for the next class. Inshallah, see you on Friday. Thank <laughs> you.